I'm Anna Kroll and I'm a women's health physiotherapist and I'd like to talk to you about how myofascial release can be helpful for women with pelvic organ prolapse. To understand prolapse, first we need to understand how the body works. For hundreds of years we've understood the body to be like this, built brick upon brick upon brick with one part balanced on top of the next. Uh, with movement coming from the system of levers and pulleys. And this way of looking at the body is called biomechanics. More recently, there's been an alternative model put forward called biotensegrity. And the, the main idea of this is that everything is suspended in a web of connective tissue, also known as fascia. So, looking at the body this way, it explains how it can be strong yet supple, supported yet dynamic, and move easily in an energy efficient way. So, the, the connective tissue or fascia uh, is the elastic balance on this model. Um, it is the stuff that covers and links everything else, it runs through and around every nerve, muscle, bone and organ crisscrossing into a three-dimensional tensional web. Uh, the fascia itself is made up of three things. It's made up of collagen, which is strong, elastin, which is stretchy, and something called ground substance, which is a kind of viscous goo. And this viscous goo can be a little more viscous and a little less viscous. Um, fascia can become restricted and stiff like this, uh, a stuck bit of fascia will pull through the tensional web and fascial release is about softening and correcting that. Uh, there's lots of different theories about exactly how that happens but the best analogy is through looking at cornflower and water because it behaves in quite a similar way to the fascia. Uh, so what, what happens when you've got cornflour and water mixed together is if you press it hard and quickly, it resists against you. Whereas if you sink really gently into it, it kind of sucks you in and becomes more soft and fluid. And although the fascia is more complex than cornflour and water, uh, it has quite a similar effect. Over the last 50 years, our understanding of the fascia and fascia science has rapidly developed and we're learning what a complex and important body part is. People all over the world have developed different ways of working with the fascia and of releasing the fascia, uh, but what most of them have, have in common is a combination of a certain gentle pressure which kind of equalises the pressure that the fascia gives off with a certain nudge one way or the other, which kicks off the softening process, similar to the cornflower and water. Uh, but all bodywork and movement therapy, so all Pilates, yoga, physiotherapy, osteopathy and massage, everything will be affecting the fascia because it's everywhere. So, going back to the two different ways of understanding how the body works. When we look at the body as a biomechanical structure, like this, uh, prolapse can only be a fall or a droop. Uh, one structure which started off higher up ends up lower down and it's hard to put back up. But when we look at the body as a biotensegrity structure, uh, that idea doesn't really hold up because things don't fall out of alignment in this kind of structure, but they can be pulled out of alignment. So, if an organ is being pulled out of alignment, how exactly is that happening? I'll come back to that in just a minute. First, I want to talk about the things that we know are helpful for pelvic floor and prolapse. So, we know that pelvic floor muscle training uh, is helpful for women with prolapse, especially when it includes a down training or a relaxation component, and especially when focus is made on symmetry between the two sides of the pelvis. Uh, 
We know that visceral release and mesial abdominal therapy, which aim to release any restrictions through the abdomen, can be really beneficial. Uh, we know that acupuncture is helpful and that any work to improve our alignment and posture overall can also help to reduce symptoms, as can any movement therapy, which is teaching us how to use our pelvis to the best of our ability. And there's also certain breath related treatments looking at how the diaphragm and the pelvic floor can be used together to help with the symptoms of pelvic organ prolapse. What I've been doing is looking at how fascial restrictions within vaginal tissue itself affects the balance and alignment of the pelvic organs. Fascia is built to stretch and the vagina of all the body parts is built to stretch. It can be the shape and size of a tampon or a penis or a baby and then back to being the shape of a tampon again. Uh, and it does this through two things. Uh, one, by being highly fascial. It's made up of a lot of connective tissue. Uh, and also uh, through a series of pleats and folds. Uh, a lot of the vaginal tissue is folded in on itself, which can open and fold and open and fold. Uh, however, when these pleats and folds get stiff or stuck, say through injury or scar tissue or infection, uh, or if there was any other tension and tethering within vaginal tissue itself, then it pulls on the nearby soft structures, such as the uterus, rectum and bladder. The vagina is built to stretch, so I think it's important that we test vaginal tissue for stretchiness and pliability to gain a full picture of how the pelvic organs are becoming displaced. By looking within the walls of the vagina, the pelvic floor and the perineum for pliability and stretch, we can find areas of soreness, tension, discomfort, or even areas that when touched, elicit a feeling of the prolapse itself. Uh, by testing into these areas for stretch and releasing them either through myofascial release or any other kind of bodywork release, uh, we can reduce the pull on the nearby organs and allow the alignment to be improved. Say for example this is a nice healthy bit of connective tissue and then due to injury or postural habits or movement problems, it becomes all scarred up like this. Then what happens is that the pleats and folds get kind of stiff and stuck together and, and give a, a, a downward dragging on the nearby soft structures. Okay, and, and here's how that works with the pleats and folds. If, if the pleats and folds are all stuck together, then the whole of that bit of vaginal tissue becomes too stiff and stuck. So say that was your uterus and that was your left sitting bone and your right sitting bone and this bit of connective tissue has become all gathered up, then the uterus is going to move in the direction of that gathered up bit of connective tissue. However, through myofascially releasing this bit of tight or tense or stiff or stuck tissue, then it can go back to its improved alignment, which then allows the folds to work in a better way, which then takes the pressure out of the internal connective tissue system, which then takes the pull off that organ. Many women have seen a significant improvement in their prolapse symptoms and any associated back and hip pain and stiffness with this kind of work. I believe that prolapse is caused by a tension, not a weakness of pelvic structures. And this kind of internal release work alongside other treatments can be hugely beneficial for many women.